It's hard to believe one of the biggest television franchises tried to hide its name. For one reason or another, all these shows changed titles. Some for the better, but others not so much. It's easy to understand why Seinfeld is seen today as one of the most popular, beloved, and influential shows of the past 50 years. Its unique brand of fast-paced, whip-smart comedy and stories that defied convention became a watershed moment in television that shapes the landscape of sitcoms forever. Famously a show about nothing, its episodes were anything but ordinary, often revolving around a single everyday moment like waiting for a seat at a restaurant or buying a loaf of bread. However, as quintessential a series as Seinfeld has become, it didn't start out that way. When it premiered in July of 1989, there were a couple minor differences in terms of characters, and it even had a different title. Airing as The Seinfeld Chronicles, it centered on New York comedian Jerry Seinfeld and his surly friend George Costanza, alongside a wacky neighbor. It still starred Jerry Seinfeld, Jason Alexander, and Michael Richards, but the neighbor played by Richards was named Kessler, not Kramer. Ah, what are you doing? Kessler, it's a tape! What's more, Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character Elaine was nowhere to be found. Even more surprising, the pilot episode was received negatively by audiences. Thankfully, the showrunners implemented a few key changes, simplified the title, and TV history was made. The 1980s might be the all-time best decade for family sitcoms. Seeing the birth of classics like Who's the Boss, Growing Pains, Family Ties, and Full House. Smack dab in the middle of these classic series was the Hogan family. The Sandy Duncan-led comedy followed an aunt who arrives to take care of her nieces and nephews after the death of her sister. However, that premise isn't actually how the series started. It was originally titled Valerie and starred Valerie Harper in the title role as a wife and mother of three kids, who struggles to keep her busy life in order. After the show's second season, though, Harper was unceremoniously fired following a contract dispute, and her character was killed off-screen. So in came Duncan as Aunt Sandy, and the show swapped out its title, running for another four successful years as The Hogan Family. While Harper was forced to watch her own show go on and find success without her, she would eventually get the last laugh after the studio sued her trying to claim she'd quit the series. Harper countersued in defiance and ultimately won out when she was awarded $1.4 million in lost wages in 1988. Arriving on the airwaves in 1975, Saturday Night Live became an instant classic. While SNL certainly wasn't the first successful sketch comedy show to air, its iconic cast of lesser-known raw talent made it decidedly different from those that had come before. What's more, the show was far edgier than its predecessors, breaking down comedic barriers and eventually becoming an American cultural staple that turned nearly its entire cast into stars. With such a well-chronicled history, it's hard to picture that the series ever went by a different name. But for its first season, it did. The reason for the discrepancy was that ahead of the premiere, SNL studio learned that there was already a variety show in development called Saturday Night Live. To avoid legal problems or confusion among the audience, the sketch comedy show launched as NBC's Saturday Night. Conveniently, the other Saturday Night Live ended after just one year, so NBC rebranded its late-night series with the title that we all know now. And it's a good thing too, because SNL rolls off the tongue a lot better than NSN. In the mid-90s, the Star Trek franchise was one of the biggest names on TV, with both Deep Space Nine and Voyager on the air. Later in that decade, though, ratings for both shows began to decline, and it felt like some franchise fatigue was setting in. In response to this downward trend, showrunners made the decision to wait until both series had ended before launching another. The result was Star Trek Enterprise. Airing its first episodes in the fall of 2001, the show broke the status quo by being a prequel set in the early days of human space exploration, more than 100 years before Kirk and Spock went where no one had gone before. This is Captain Jonathan Archer of the Starship Enterprise. I don't need to tell you where we are. What some may not remember, however, is that when the show first began, it broke the norm in another way by removing Star Trek from the title. Although it's difficult to imagine a major franchise trying to distance itself from its own name, because the Star Trek brand was fading in popularity, it was a strategic move at the time. Thus, for its first two seasons, the series was simply known as Enterprise. It also featured a pop song in the main title sequence in place of the orchestral themes of prior Star Trek shows. Unfortunately, these changes did little to attract a broader audience. And by Season 3, the show was officially retitled Star Trek Enterprise. With a new showrunner in Season 4, reviews improved, but it wasn't enough to save it. The series was sadly given the axe after its fourth season. John Ritter was one of the industry's biggest sitcom stars thanks to Three's Company and its continuation. 
3's a crowd. But when those came to an end, he struggled to find another popular series, starring in short-lived shows like Hooperman and Hearts of Fire. In 2002, though, the actor took the adult lead in the sitcom Eight Simple Rules, where he starred as a middle-aged father and husband raising three kids. Future Big Bang Theory alum Kaylee Cuoco played Bridget, Ritter's on-screen daughter. However, not everyone knows that Bridget was once a titular character in the series. When the show first aired, it had the longer name Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter. In its first season, the show ranked fairly well in the ratings and seemed poised to become a hit. So in its second year, the title was simplified to make it a little less clunky. I can't believe I never thought of that. I mean, I'm always like so logical. Tragically, Ritter's sudden death in 2003 forced a total overhaul and season 3 saw the show retooled to focus on his character's father and brother. Without Ritter, however, the sitcom just couldn't stay afloat, and Eight Simple Rules was cancelled after its third season. Famous today for featuring a pair of superstars before they were famous, Two Guys and a Girl is pretty much exactly what it says in the title, a sitcom centered on two male college buddies who are friends with a young woman. Deadpool star Ryan Reynolds played alongside Richard Rucolo, and Trailer Howard as Burke, Peace, and Sharon, respectively. Additionally, Nathan Fillion played Sharon's boyfriend, Johnny. Though the show was never a major hit, it did air for four seasons and remains one of the most criminally underappreciated 90s sitcoms. Similar to Eight Simple Rules, Two Guys and a Girl initially had a name that was a lot longer and tougher to rattle off. Upon its release in 1998, the series was called Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place. And the plot of season 1 focused on Pete and Berg as co-workers at a pizza restaurant. Now, that decision occurred because the show was actually based on the real-life experiences of creator Kenny Schwartz, who worked at a pizza joint while in college. The title wasn't shortened just to make it easier to say, either. After the show's first season, the pizza place premise was de-emphasized and eventually ditched altogether. This meant removing it from the title, and thus the show became two guys and a girl. Long before Freaks and Geeks, there was another iconic teen comedy that made a name for itself thanks to its offbeat humor and unique storytelling style. It might be one of the most underrated 90s TV shows, and its name was Parker Lewis Can't Lose. The show followed a popular high schooler and his oddball friends as they got themselves in and out of trouble. The series starred Corin Nemec as the titular Parker Lewis, whose penchant for tongue-in-cheek monologues and fourth-wall-breaking asides evokes undeniable shades of the John Hughes classic, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Aside from its strange sense of humor, one of the things that made the show unique was its fast-paced filming style, which consisted of quick cuts, comic book angles, and cartoonish sound effects. While this aesthetic has helped it become a cult classic, it may have turned off some audiences, as many of the show's more avant-garde elements were pushed aside for its third season. It was around that time that the series also saw a name change to the more straightforward Parker Lewis. There have been countless Batman shows over the years, from iconic entries like the live-action series starring Adam West to the legendary Batman the Animated Series. In more recent years, the TV exploits of The Dark Knight have mostly revolved around the wider cast of characters in Batman's world, with various series fixating on police officer James Gordon, Batwoman, and the Caped Crusader sidekicks, it was only a matter of time before Alfred got his own spin-off. In 2019, fans got exactly that with Pennyworth, the origin of Batman's butler. A prequel to Gotham, the series explores the early life of Alfred Pennyworth, when he worked as a James Bond-esque agent running his own security agency. However, the series didn't start out with that Arden and Wildly title. Initially, it had the much more pleasing name of Pennyworth. While it was a simple enough title, by the show's second season, it seems the network was worried that audiences didn't know the significance of the name and how it is related to Batman. As a result, they changed the name of the series to include the awkward subtitle for Season 3 in order to make it completely clear that, yes, this is the origin of Batman's butler. No child of the 80s or 90s could forget Saved by the Bell, possibly the most oddly celebrated teen show ever produced. Its esteem is an oddity because it wasn't that stylish or slick, nor was it particularly good. Instead, it was a kitschy, corny, goofball comedy for the whole family that was meme-worthy long before such a concept existed. It's centered on hip high schooler Zach Morris, his jock best friend A.C. Slater, nerdy misfit Screech, trendy Lisa Turtle, straight-A student Jesse Spano, and cheerleader Kelly Kapowski. When the show got its start in 1989, however, it was something very different and not nearly as appealing to teens as it later became. This was due to the fact that several members of that cast weren't present yet, and the focus of the show wasn't even the kids themselves. Instead, the star of the series was their teacher, Miss Bliss, played by former child star Hayley Mills. Fittingly, the original title of the show was Good Morning, Miss Bliss, which was how it was known for its entire first season. In fact, Slater, Jesse, and Kelly weren't yet part of the series. 
and there were several others who were there in their place. After 14 episodes, the students became the center of the stories, and Miss Bliss was written out of her own show. Wow, that's great! How did the poor sap take it? After that, the series was renamed Saved by the Bell, continuing to air with this title for four seasons. In 1960, Hollywood legend Andy Griffith got his own show, a sitcom about a small-town sheriff named Andy Taylor. Future Three's company star Don Knotts co-starred alongside him as Barney Fife, a bumbling goofball, while a young Ron Howard played Taylor's son, Opie. The Andy Griffith show was a smash hit, becoming one of the biggest shows of its era. With ratings to compete with powerhouse series like Bonanza and Bewitched, it ultimately ran for more than a decade, depending on how you look at it. The exact length of time the show aired is somewhat up for debate. Following Andy Griffith's exit after season 8, the series got a new name, Mayberry RFD. While the change is sometimes considered the beginning of a new series, the fact that most of the supporting cast from the previous year returned means it's often viewed as a continuation of the original show. Names for the fictional town the series was set in, Mayberry RFD centered on Ken Berry's character, town councilman Sam Jones. While many other recurring characters returned throughout the show's run, Griffith, along with his co-stars Knotts and Howard, was noticeably absent aside from the occasional guest appearance. Though the series shift away from Andy Taylor could have killed the show, Mayberry RFD lived on for another three seasons.